just open. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Morning, everyone. Are we there? Okay, man. Lauren is unmuting. All right. Morning, everyone. My name is Martin. Martin Atlani from NMG. Um, today we'll be talking about the two-part system, and I'm sure it's a topic that everyone is familiar with, everyone's heard about, and everyone's been getting a whole lot of questions about. So today we've got one hour where we will be addressing this particular topic, and uh, we will be playing a video um, for the last bit of the presentation, and everyone is more than welcome to actually ask questions. We will be having a Q&A at the end of the session, so as I present, Please feel free to actually um, list your questions, put the, the questions on the box, and then we'll address them at the end of the session. All right, so what are we going to be talking about? We're going to uh, explain what the two-part system is. We're going to talk about the three parts. Yes, you will understand why we talk, we talk why it's actually three parts. Um, we're going to talk about which members would be excluded or who would be excluded, how you're going to withdraw as well as the fees and the most, most painful part, which is the taxation of uh, the withdrawals that members can actually make. All right. Then towards the end, we will talk about, we, we will give you the platform to actually ask questions. All right. So the session is supposed to take at least about an hour, like I mentioned, but uh, please uh, feel free to just jot down your questions as we go along. All right. Let's talk about the two-part system. Towards the end of um, March, or rather towards the end of uh, the year 2021, the National Treasury introduced an idea for retirement savings called the two-part system. And the whole idea of introducing this two-part system was based on two uh, major issues. The, the, we all know that South Africans generally battle when it comes to financial issues. Most of us, we, we find that there's too much month at the end of our pay. Uh, we cannot really survive. And there, were, there have been a whole lot of members that have been leaving their retirement funds just to access their money, um, or leaving their employment just to access their money from retirement funds. And I'm sure most of us can relate to this where a colleague has actually left employment, not because he doesn't want to work anymore, but they're getting a lot of financial stress. And there's a couple of um, thousands that are actually sitting within their retirement fund and they feel that the only option that they have basically was they cannot make any withdrawal from their retirement fund is to basically resign and take their money from the retirement fund. So the National Treasury actually came up with an option of at least allowing members to access a portion of their money uh, with limits, of course, which is something that we're going to talk about. So that's one of the main reasons why the two-part system was actually introduced, to make sure that at least members get to access a portion of their retirement savings while they're still working. All right, the second part, the second reason was to also try and improve the statistics of members, because um, it's generally said that 6% of South Africans get to retire comfortably. So um, the stats actually were showing that a whole lot of South Africans do not preserve their retirement benefits, especially when they change jobs or, yeah, especially when they change jobs. The member actually belongs to a retirement fund for a couple of years, gets another job somewhere, they take their benefit in cash, start working, start saving, get another job, take their benefit in cash, and by the time they get to retirement, they really don't have enough money to retire on. So the two-part system was also introduced to ensure that it forces members to preserve their retirement benefits when they leave employment. And I'll explain this as we go ahead with the presentation. All right, now let's talk about the three parts. I know this could be a bit confusing because we talk about two parts and three parts, but I hope you're going to get clarity after, we start, uh, after I start explaining this. So the three parts that we're basically talking about is the first one is what we call the vested part. Most of us already have this. So when you talk about the vested pot, we're basically talking about the money that you have saved from the time you've actually started working up until the 31st of August, 2024. So Martin started working about 24, 25 years ago. He's been saving into a retirement pot. By 31st of August, that pot is, is sorry, the, whatever it is that he saved from the time he actually started working up until the 31st of uh, August, that is what we basically call the vested pot. 
So how does this vested bond get to be paid out? At the moment, as long as you're still employed, you're not going to be accessing that, that money. But the old rules would actually apply if you decide to leave your fund. So all these years that Martin has been saving, let's say for argument's sake, he saved 700,000. That money from the first of 31st of August would sit in what we call the vested pot. Then Martin starts saving into a, a two other pots from the 1st of September going forward, of which these are the other two parts. So what we the first part is actually the savings pot. Now, how's the savings pot going to work? I'll basically use an example. First pot, which is your your vested pot, you have saved a certain portion within that particular pot. The 1st of September, you start saving into two new pots, the first one being the savings pot. What gets into the savings pot is basically one third of your monthly contributions. For argument's sake, let's say a member is actually contributing 900 rands per month. 300 rands of that amount is automatically taken into your savings pot and 600 rands gets to be put into your retirement pot, which is something we're going to talk about later on. So how does the money in the savings pot get to be paid out? Well, let me start here. When we start saving into the savings pot from the 1st of September, the pot will be sitting at zero, so there won't be anything. And a lot of us would be wanting to actually access money. So what the government has decided to do is to ensure that members have a little bit of something as a start-up amount within that particular savings pot. So what they will do is they'll take 10% from your previous pot, which is your invested pot, and get to transfer it into your savings pot. But when I talk of 10%, we're saying 10% up to a maximum of 30,000. In other words, Martin's got 600,000 that he's got within his, save, his, his um, uh, vested pot. And Martin, they would look at 10% of 600,000, which is 60,000, but the cap is actually 30,000. So only 30,000 would be transferred into your savings pot. So they cannot transfer anything more than 30,000 rands into your savings pot. Okay. So, like we've mentioned, it's one third that gets to be contributed. So, anyway, what happens is 30,000 rands gets to be transferred, and going forward, a third of your contributions would be sitting in this pot. Okay, we're going to talk about the different ways of making this withdrawal from this particular pot. Okay, but you can only make one withdrawal because at the end of the day, we need to understand that a retirement fund should not be taken as a transitional bank account. So what, the, what they've actually decided to do is to ensure that they put in a cap and a minimum amount that you can actually withdraw. So you cannot withdraw anything less than 2,000 rands from your pot and you can draw as much as you want, but you can only make one withdrawal within a tax year, which is something we're going to talk about. So that's the savings spot. Savings spot in a nutshell, it's money that you can actually access once a year from the 1st of September. And there's a seeding amount of up to 30,000 rands that gets to be put out into that retirement pot and it's once off. So it's not like every year they'll be putting, taking 30,000 or 10% of your of, your, of the money that you have sitting within your vested pot and investing and putting it into your savings pot. This only have, is going to happen only once. And this is meant to just assist members that urgently need some cash. While we're still on the savings pot, the mere fact that this money is available does not necessarily mean that we should be taking it. Okay, and you will understand the implications of making these withdrawals as we go ahead with the presentation. All right. Now, the third pot is what we call the retirement pot. This is where the two-thirds are actually deposited. Remember, just as a recap, savings pot, no, sorry, your vested pot is money that you've always had. From the 1st of September, then you're going to have a savings pot where one-third gets to be contributed, and then the two-thirds gets into the retirement pot. Now, this money that sits within the retirement pot or the money that you'll be contributing into this retirement pot, you will not manage to access this, and you can only access it up when you go on retirement. This is the 
that when I go back to my initial example where I said, let's say you're contributing 900 rands per month, 300 rands goes into the savings pot, 600 rands goes into your retirement pot. That's 600 rands and whatever it is that you contribute in that particular pot would not be accessible to members and, and should only be accessible when the guys actually go on retirement. Why? Remember, we mentioned right in the beginning that the reason why the two-part system was introduced is basically to ensure that members are also forced to preserve for retirement. Now, by putting money into this retirement pot, yes, you're giving them, you, are, you do have an access to the savings pot, but there's an amount that you can only access at retirement. So I think more than anything else, the reason why this was introduced is to make sure that, yes, you've got a certain portion that you can actually access. But hey, the two thirds that you have within that other pot, you will only access at retirement so that we do not exhaust our retirement savings while we're still employed. Okay. So the three pots, the vested pot, an example here, 15,000 rands, 10% of 15,000 rands, um, sorry, 10% of 150,000 rands would be 15,000. And that will be, with this particular example, that's the money that will be actually transferred into um, the vested amount, all right, into the savings pot. So the amount into the savings pot will be 15,000 that will be transferred in this particular example. So remember, our situations are not going to be the same. We would have members that would most probably have 750,000, only 30,000 would be transferred into that particular pot. We'd have members that would only have 200,000, 10% of that would only be 20,000 rents that gets to be um, contributed into that pot. So with the last two points, within your savings pot, 300 bucks or 300 rands would be contributed into your savings pot and 600 rands would be contributed into the retirement pot. But these figures that I'm showing now are just for illustrative purposes. Some of us will find that we contribute 3,000 rands per month. So in this that particular example, 1,000 rands would actually go into the savings pot and 2,000 rands into the retirement pot. I hope that is clear. Okay, now who will be excluded from this? If you start saving from the 1st of September, 2024, you will not have a vested pot for obvious reasons. So we're talking about someone that's just been employed, right? And you start employment from the 1st of September, you would obviously not have anything that you've saved prior to um, the 1st of September. So you only have the two parts, which would be the savings pot and the retirement pot, okay? So those members would not be, those members would be excluded. Then your older members, like I mentioned, um, the two-part system, as the discussions on the two-part system started a couple of years ago, about three years ago, and for all members that were the, uh, by the 1st of March 2021, 55 years, right, those members would be excluded from this, but they've got an option to opt in. So in other words, they do not automatically belong or do not have to be uh, uh, automatically part of the two-part system, but these guys have an option to actually opt in, which is something that is really not uh, recommended, especially for the elder, because what it basically means is these guys now have access to their money, and it could be pretty dangerous for them to start making a withdrawal uh, so early, because they're basically stealing from the old man or the old woman that they're going to be in the next few years, right? So for members that are 55, that were 55, sorry, uh, 50, um, that were 55 and above from the 1st of March, 2021, these guys would be excluded uh, from this, but they've got an option to actually opt in. So we're talking about members that are 53 in September, that will be 53 in September, 20, um, 2024, but they've got an option to actually opt in. Okay. So withdrawal conditions. If you have a benefit in the savings pot, you can withdraw from the savings pot once a year, like I mentioned earlier on. And when I talk about once a year, we're talking about a tax year. So it's not September to September, but the tax year runs from the 1st of March in one year to the 28th of February the following year. So it has to be within those those years. So if you take a benefit, so let's say right now it gets to be introduced on the 1st of September, you make a withdrawal maybe in October or so, you can actually start making your second withdrawal after the 1st of March um, in the following year, all right? 
you need to have a minimum of 2,000 rands into your saving in your savings pot to make a withdrawal because that's the lowest value you can withdraw. Like I mentioned earlier on, the retirement fund should not be taken as a transactional bank account because now you have the guy saying, uh, now I'm, too, I'm broke this month. I need money to, to for, for transport. I need to make a withdrawal of 200 bucks. And every every month this tends to happen. So just to, to get rid of that particular perception, they have actually said you have to make a withdrawal of a minimum of 2,000 rands and you can only make it once in every tax year. Withdrawal conditions. So should you have a housing loan guarantee against your benefits in the fund? We all are aware that with certain funds, and this is not applicable to all funds, it will depend on your fund rules, certain funds actually allow guys to actually make a loan, and a housing loan, and your, your, your loan will be ceded to the fund. If you have a divorce uh, order against your benefit in the fund, a maintenance order against your benefit in the fund, if your benefit in the fund is being withheld due to misconduct, we, you, we would strongly recommend that you speak to your administrator and those guys would actually manage to assist you uh, in determining whether you can actually take um, or make a withdrawal from your savings pot and how much you can actually make um, as a withdrawal and um, the procedure that you need to actually follow to make that particular withdrawal. So this is applicable to guys with housing loans, divorce orders, maintenance orders, or if the fund is actually being held uh, for misconduct. Okay, now how do we make a withdrawal? NMG has developed a a WhatsApp app, which is uh, something that I'm going to show you in the next few seconds. So you do have an option of using the WhatsApp app. Uh, there will be um, a barcode that you need to scan. It's not yet live. It will only get live from the 1st of September for all these reasons. But this is... Um, a very good but a very good product in the sense that it actually gives you information on how the two part system actually works this will be information over and above what we've actually covered today so you can actually ask questions on the app you ask questions it gives you responses you can actually log in and you can actually get to access your fund credit obviously after some security checks have been made and it will help you through the whole process I'm going to show you the video. It's going to take a bit of time, about 15 to 20 minutes, um, of how this app actually gets to, to work. Um, over and above that, um, most of our members also have the, the access to our member portal, where you can also make um, use of this particular facility to, to make an application. And if you don't have any of these, um, the, the, any of these um, technological <laughs> a gimmicks. You, you, if you don't have WhatsApp or the access to the portal, you, what you can basically do is fill in a form, which you must probably get from your HR, and then they can you can just process it in that way. It's not the most efficient way because, it, for obvious reasons, it's actually it actually takes time. But we strongly recommend that members actually use the the WhatsApp um, the WhatsApp as well as the the member portal. So I'll just play you a video. Uh, that was recorded internally that just shows a demo of how the WhatsApp uh, is going to work. Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm quite pleased to, to present to you today um, with regards to, to our uh, savings uh, pot withdrawals and the development that we have done. Um, in order to, to cater for these withdrawals as well. So a lot of work has gone in over the last year, I can say, because we've been waiting for this piece of legislation to be uh, promulgated, and uh, we are finally there. So um, we what I've prepared for you today is a demonstration on how we are going to deal with um, the um, influx of savings withdrawals. So we anticipate quite a big influx on savings withdrawals. Um, and we want to automate this as much as possible. And so therefore, as Rana mentioned a little bit earlier on the help that we need from you in terms of providing um, member information, um, our automated processes, so our online processes, um, require this information. And the reason um, why we need
Okay. And I want to make the savings bond withdrawal. But I'm going to take you through our WhatsApp application, and then after this, I'm going to take you through our um, NMG um, member portal. So members would be able to submit uh, their claims, savings spot withdrawal through the member portal. And a lot of members are using the member portal, so that will be available. Um, communication is going to go out on how to do this um, as well in the uh, coming weeks. Um, so members um, are aware we've got a team ready to assist members as well um, with their savings spot withdrawals. But this is what I'm going to demonstrate to you to you right now. So um, our WhatsApp application, NMG WhatsApp application, we've been using this for quite a number of years at NMG. Um, it is a tool um, that members can use, our, our clients, as well as anyone on the street um, with regards to scanning in a QR code, it's as easy as that, scanning the QR code, which we will provide as well, closer to the time, um, and adding it as, or adding um, the WhatsApp application as a contact on your phone. Um, but it's a trusted uh, business account that we've been using to educate members with regards to retirement, the retirement fund, um, financial issues, mm -hmm. um, a medical aid, and so forth. And we've piggyed back onto that um, with regard to the DuPont system as well. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to go right into um, doing a demonstration on what... Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm quite pleased to, to present to you today. Um, with regards to, to our uh, savings uh, pot withdrawals and the development that we have done um, in order to, to cater. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm quite pleased to, to present to you today um, with regards to, to our uh, savings uh, pot withdrawals and the development that we have done um, in order to, to cater for these withdrawals as well. So a lot of work has gone in over the last year, I can say, because we've been waiting for this piece of legislation to be uh, promulgated, and uh, we are finally there. So um, we what I've prepared for you today is a demonstration on how we are going to deal with um, the um, influx of savings withdrawals. So we anticipate quite a big influx on savings withdrawals. Um, and we want to automate this as much as possible. And so therefore, as Rana mentioned a little bit earlier on the help that we need from you in terms of providing um, member information, um, our automated processes, so our online processes, um, require this information. And the reason um, why we need this from a trusted source, which is you as the client, through your contribution schedules, is to guard our members and to keep our members safe, your members safe, um, in terms of claiming from their savings spot. As Rizwana mentioned, we are moving into a new age where claims are now going to be received directly from members um, before um, it was a lot safer because as it currently stands, when claims are submitted, um, we receive them from an employer. Uh, they are signed off by an authorized signatory. There's a company stamp on it, but now everything changes. And so therefore the source from where we receive personal information from for the members needs to come from the employer. We cannot simply just get the information from a member going forward when they want to make a savings spot withdrawal. But I'm going to take you through our WhatsApp application and then after this, I'm going to take you through our um, NMG um, member portal. So members would be able to submit uh, their claims, savings spot withdrawal through the member portal. And a lot of members are using the member portal. So that will be available. Um, communication is going to go out on how to do this um, as well in the uh, coming weeks. Um, so members 
um, are aware we've got a team ready to assist members as well um, with their savings pot withdrawals. But this is what I'm going to demonstrate to you to you right now. So um, our WhatsApp application, NMG WhatsApp application, we've been using this for quite a number of years at NMG. Um, it is a tool um, that members can use, our, our clients, as well as anyone on the street. Um, with regards to scanning in a QR code, it's as easy as that, scanning the QR code, which we will provide as well, closer to the time, um, and adding it as, or adding um, the WhatsApp application as a contact on your phone. Um, but it's a trusted uh, business account that we've been using to educate members with regards to retirement, the retirement fund, um, financial issues, um, a medical aid, and so forth. And we've figured back onto that um, with regard to the two-part system as well. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to go right into um, doing a demonstration on what a member, and you are also a member of, of a fund, what you can experience uh, through the WhatsApp application. You can see I've opened this up now. It is a test environment, so it's not live yet. Um, so I'll take you through that process. So you add um, the contact as uh, the number as a contact on your phone, as I said, or you can scan in the QR code and just click on that and it will open up to energy benefits and it will say, uh, hello, this is energy benefits. So all you have to do is just say hi. You can see it says, uh, hello, welcome, you're Jackie. Uh, with NMG benefits, and then it comes up with a little bit of a menu um, to assist you. So you can um, uh, choose from, from the menu options. You can choose to log into your retirement fund. You can learn about the two-part system. So there's a whole learning course um, on WhatsApp to, to train you or to learn about the two-part system. You can speak to someone about our personal finance. As I mentioned before, we've been using this application for quite some time, a medical aid or anything else which will put you through to a member uh, counselor, get you in touch with a member counselor. But for this demo, I'm going to say I want to log into my retirement fund. But please, great, I can help uh, you understand and interact with your fund on WhatsApp. I will keep your information secure and only share relevant answers uh, with your retirement benefit provider. And then there's the privacy policy as well. And then let's log you in. So it's going to ask you a few questions now. So it asks you what, what a member would need um, is their ID number, um, their tax number, as well as their employee number. They would need to have that handy. And without that information, you won't get access to your retirement fund. And um, the WhatsApp application um, directly connects to our admin system. So if, for instance, like Rosanna mentioned earlier, we don't have ID numbers for members. So it's not been received on the contribution schedule. We have not updated it into the system. If I'm a member and I type in my ID number in the WhatsApp application, it will not verify and I will not get access. And so it goes with the tax number and the free number as well. So those are the three verifications right up front that is done to allow you access. So I'm just going to say yes, I have a South African ID number. Um, it will then ask me to type in my ID number. It is now that it's linked to our system and it says it can take a few minutes. We just want to see if we can find you on the system. And if we don't have the correct info, then um, the WhatsApp will come back and say it cannot find you. Um, and it will then um, give you information to contact um, NMG. So I just want to, to, to add on to this um, where a member cannot be verified. We can see here that it's now find, found me, but where a member cannot be verified, um, the WhatsApp application will tell the member to contact NMG. Our internal process in terms of savings spot withdrawals um, is uh, not to update 
a member's details directly from the member that the member provides onto our system. So we will be fielding these members back to, to you as the client. So we will be telling the member that unfortunately we cannot update the details onto our system. They need to go to the HR person or payroll officer to update the information. Um, the payroll officer can then provide um, NMG. So we will provide you with a two-part um, email address, um, can provide that in the information to NMG. And then once we receive the information from the authorized person, we will update into Everest and contact the member back and tell the member he can now go and access WhatsApp again. But it, it goes without saying, we cannot update information received directly from the member, and this is to protect the members um, so that not anyone can just go in and try to claim your money on your fund. So therefore, we've got very strict um, policy with regards to, to these member-initiated claims. Okay, but then to carry on, it now asks me for my tax number. So the same as what I explained before, up in your tax number, it's going to go and verify to the system. It just says there, I didn't get that. Can you try again? Make sure you type in the answer carefully. So that gives you one try. I, I, I did make some do something wrong. Um, I'll say again, I have both numbers, and now it's going to tell me again to type in my tax number. And now it says, great, it matches our system. And what is your employee number? So I'll type in my employee number, and we match back to our system again to see that uh, it matches the system. So then you can go ahead. So now WhatsApp will tell you it's official. This chat can be verified. Let's look into your fund details. So you can now select which fund you would like to look at. So it will find all your records on our admin system, and it's going to give you the fund details. In this demonstration, we've got a pension and provident fund. Um, I'm going to go into the provident fund here uh, because I want to also just show you an additional service that we've provided um, for members on provident funds that were older than 55 at March 2021. So the system will identify that. It will check as well if you are opted into the two-part system. So members that were 55 at 1 March 2021 that joined the fund prior to 1 March 2021, these members would not be uh, opted into the two-part system. So they would have to opt into the two-part system. So our WhatsApp application will allow for that as well. So it tells a member a little bit about that you need to opt into the two-part system. You're opted out. Um, you now have an opportunity to opt in. Um, and you can opt in at any time. But once you've made an election, you can't opt out again. Are you ready to make the decision? So. You can either say yes, you're ready, or no, you need more information. So option B is then going to provide the member with a bit more information about what it means to opt into the two-part system to also directly uh, to a benefit counsellor if they, if they need to speak some, to someone in person before they make this option. But let's say, yes, I, I want to opt in. Okay. Um, what will you do? Opt into the two-part system, continue to opt out, or go back to choose another fund? I'm going to say now I want to opt in. Type to A. We'll then say thanks. I've captured your decision in our system. Your provident fund. Here is a menu of options to be able to interact more with your fund. So what happens now is it updates into our admin system your um, opt-in date. Um, so once that happens, the system is then going to seed um, your benefit. So what it will do is it will do the calculation of your, your fund credit. It is going to see 10% to a maximum of 30,000 into your savings pot, and it's going to create a retirement pot as well. And then your vested pot. Your money is then going to be reinvested. So, so let's say I've opted in now. I would like to make a savings pot withdrawal. So I'll choose option D from the list that I can that I can choose from. And 
says, great, let me walk you through your savings withdrawal benefit request. There are eight steps to, to this process. So now it's going to ask you for the information that you need to update in order to process this, this uh, savings spot withdrawal. So it first needs to go and see, do you qualify for a withdrawal at this stage? And this is where the interaction with our admin system happens. So in this case, it's found that I have 25,000 grand in my savings spot. Um, and then uh, it will ask me, am I ready to decide on how much I want to withdraw? withdraw? So I'll say, yes, okay, I'm ready. And how much do I want to withdraw? So I'm going to say 10,000. So the validations have been built in, so that you cannot draw more than 25,000, so more than what is available in your pot, but also you can't draw less than 2,000 two rand if you've, if you've got a balance less than 2,000. And it will also do a validation to see if you had a savings spot withdrawal in the same tax year as well. So all of those validations are built in and it will advise you of this. Um, so now it will tell me, so you want to withdraw 10,000 out of your savings spot, is that correct? I'll say yes. It will then come back and it will, will show me that there's a fee that's going to be deducted. I'll say yes, I want to continue. Then it is going to come back and tell me on my 10,000 rand of the uh, charged and the, the approximate tax that will be deducted from my benefit. So what, what the WhatsApp application does is it takes your um, salary that you currently earn or that's loaded on our system. Um, and if it can't find one, it's going to apply a marginal tax rate to that, this is not an exact amount. This is based on the marginal tax rate, and it's usually between um, 18 and 45 percent, but it gives you an approximate figure. Um, we've built, uh, since built in uh, more validations or, or more information just to tell you about uh, what a marginal tax rate is as well, um, for you to make a more informed decision. But in this case, I'm gonna say yes, I do wanna continue. It then asks me um, for my banking details. So it types in, uh, uh, I'm assigning my, my name, so I'm just going to say the testing. It then asks me for my um, type of account. I'll say it's a savings account. Um, it will ask me for my bank account number, and I'll type in the bank account number. And then it asks me for the bank code. Remember, we need all of this information as well. And then once done, um, it will say, ask me for contact information. So we can, can I be contacted on? I'll start in my cell phone number and then my email address as well. And then I am done. So it will just do a final check on step eight. Are you sure you want to go ahead? And you'll say yes. And this information will now be recorded onto our admin system. So, and it will bring me back to the main menu, menu and I can then go and ask, you know, uh, search more options that I want to check out. But I think um, for the WhatsApp application, you could see that the member updated their back end in terms of the savings spot withdrawal uh, that they want the account to be paid into. Um, in, the, in the claims process, the, the validations um, that we've got, um, when these member details are updated into our system, it is going to validate. So it will do a validation based on the member's ID number, according to the SARS algorithm. Then what it does is it sends the back details through to BankServe. It's an automated process. It's how we currently work at NFG. It sends um, an electronic submission through to BankServe to verify those bank accounts. Um, and it matches ID number and various other um, validations that are done to make sure that this is the correct bank account. It belongs to the member. Um, and also, one of the verifications that it does is to see that the bank account has um, been open for more than uh, three months. If a bank account hasn't been open for more than three months, it's 
going to fail the validation um, and then a case manager, so an administrator at NEG would have to contact you to verify your bank account. So we're going to ask you for a letter from the bank um, stipulating that this account was opened on such and such a date. We're going to ask for certified copies of ID. We're going to get all of that information before we will continue and then we'll send back to, to BankServe to validate again. And only once it's validated, we can continue with the bank account, with the, with the a savings bond withdrawal. On our system, if a, a bank account does not verify, we cannot process any payments. Our system will generate a zero payment instruction. Nothing can be processed through. So that is already operating and it's a trusted service that we use via, via hyphen. I think the second validation that will come in is with the SARS application. So when the tax goes through to SARS, your, your tax number is validated, your ID number is validated, your personal details are also validated. Um, and then once we receive all of that back in, um, correctly, then only will that claim be processed. Um, another thing to mention with regard to saving spot withdrawals, I, I didn't demo this now. Um, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, sorry. I, I forgot about that. But if you can... Um, have a look here, you will see the withdrawal request has been submitted. You'll be contacted by a case manager within one week. They will ask additional documentation regarding your housing loan before decide, deciding whether your withdrawal um, can be processed. So, in this uh, demonstration, we flagged the member record so uh, with a housing loan, and that could be for a Section 37G in terms of misconduct, or it could be. Um, for divorce order or maintenance order, the system will be flagged and therefore it will advise the member that um, someone will contact them because we first need to go and check to see can we pay this out. So in terms of our housing loan, just quickly, we will phone the bank, we're going to ask for your outstanding balance, we're going to check that across all three of your pots, savings, retirement and vested pot, that there's enough money to take your withdrawal to pay that indebtedness. Um, and then only will we continue with the claim process. Um, so therefore, it's very important that we are notified of any um, flaggings that need to be applied. Housing loans we are okay with. We get um, the, house, the, the book from the bank and we do have uh, our recons on a monthly basis. And we flag me the record on a monthly basis. Misconduct, we rely on you to provide that. Divorce orders, as soon as you know, let us know. Spouses are quite good, so are the attorneys to let us know about the, the divorce orders. Um, and then just a note, in terms of divorce orders, if there is a summons that's been issued, then we will not go uh, continue with the savings spot withdrawal. So we will advise the member that the, there's pending divorce. It must be finalised before a savings spot withdrawal can be, can be taken. Okay, and I think there, there might be many, many questions, but um, we, will, we will look at those after, after the session. Um, and then, All right, I'm back. So I hope that video was pretty clear. It showed everyone else how the WhatsApp uh, app would actually work. But for now, this is not yet live. It will only be live from the 1st of September for obvious reasons. So we're all going to be getting access to this and we can manage to do this um, online, which is a very easy, very fast process. I also spoke about the portal. Uh, with the portal, all you basically need to do is just log into the, into, um, the portal, you get a pin and password. Most of you already have that. And then you can just check on how much you've got um, and it will basically show you the process that you need to follow to actually make your withdrawal. Now let's get to the second part, the last part. So there are fees that will be charged for making a withdrawal from the savings port. And uh, these are calculated as 2% of the gross withdrawal value but kept at 600 rands. So there will be a minimum fee of 85 rands or 
uh, two point five percent of the amount that you'd actually be withdrawing, and should it would be kept at six hundred rands. So if you decide to withdraw, like for an example, if you decide to withdraw twenty thousand rands from your savings pot, you would have to pay five hundred rands. Twenty thousand times uh, two point five percent will give you five hundred, and if you withdraw thirty thousand, you would have to pay six hundred. Whereas the the twenty five two point five percent would work out to seven hundred fifty, and the gap is actually six hundred rands. So you can't be paying anything more than 600 rands for fees. Now, we to, to, to come and make the withdrawal, um, withdraw from the savings pot before retirement, you'll be taxed at your marginal rate. This is the scary part about this whole or, 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 um, two-pot system. We all, I'm assuming that everyone actually understand, understands what a marginal tax rate is, or just in a nutshell. A marginal tax rate is the rate at which you are actually taxed. So you pay as you earn kind of setup. So in other words, if Martin is earning um, 200,000, because there are tax tables that basically show people that earn a certain amount and how much they actually get to, to, to earn as tax. So we all know that members that earn about 97,000 rands or less do not pay tax. So when these guys actually make a withdrawal from the savings part, they automatically would not be taxed, but obviously a tax number would be required. But then we also need to be very careful in saying that members that earn less than 97,000 rands would not be taxed, because in some instances, depending on how much this member actually wants to withdraw, it can push them to another tax bracket that um, may, may, may need them to actually uh, get to pay tax. So just as an example, Martin earns 97,000 rands per annum, and he wants to make it the withdrawal of uh, 30,000 rands. So what they'll basically do is say 97,000, yes, if it was less than, uh, so 97,000 plus the 30,000, it automatically pushes me to a, a tax bracket where I would most probably need to pay 18%. So that person would most probably pay tax. So while we're still on this marginal tax, what they basically do is for members that are earning, let's say around 300,000, um, that tax bracket is sitting at uh, 26%. So before a member gets to actually get to get that, that, that withdrawal, they would have to pay 26% or 26% would be actually deducted for tax, which is very, very scary. This is very, very expensive money. And we strongly recommend that members get to speak to a financial advisor prior to making any withdrawal or get guidance from the app. Um, like Elise actually mentioned in the video as well. At least the app would give a rough indication of how much you're going to pay for tax and how much the fees would be. Pretty easy to calculate the fees because you know very well that you're not going to be paying anything more than 600 grants. But when it comes to the tax on the benefit, if you really get to think of it, most members are already expecting that they will be getting a 30,000 rand amount. But I don't think anyone will be getting 30,000 rands in September. It's well dependent. Well, in September, there won't be anyone that will be getting 30,000 rands because there's going to be fees and tax that they'll get, get to pay. Okay. And another thing is what we also need to understand is once we make a withdrawal from the savings spot, you're basically stealing from the old man or the old woman that you're going to be. So Remember, most of us actually sit on what we call defined contribution funds. And what it basically means is that what you get at retirement is determined by what you've actually put in, what you've saved, as well as the investment growth that you've had in that particular retirement pot. But the more we take money out of that pot, our net replacement ratios or the money that we have or will have at retirement is going to be substantially low. So I think I would strongly recommend that members, before you make any, any withdrawal, think twice because of the tax implications as well as the effect that it would have on the amount that you're going to um, get at retirement. We strongly recommend that you speak, seek advice or use the app, app for guidance. All right. So we we'll strongly consider that you speak to an accredited financial advisor to optimize your retirement savings strategy. These financial advisors can even assist you with cal in calculating the how much of an impact your withdrawal would have on your retirement fund, your final retirement fund money. Okay. So we've got to the end of the session. I see there's a whole lot of questions that have been put in. I think we still have time to actually take those particular questions. If it so happens that we run out of time, what we are going to be doing post a series of sessions, we're going to be 
doing a Q&A document that basically answers all the questions, but I'll try by all means to actually answer all the questions that you've actually sent through on, on, um, on, 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 on the app. Okay, the first question. How or when do we know how much we'll have in that port to withdraw? Okay. All right. For instance, if a 31 year old employee with a vested pot of 500 rands resigns or dismissed in 2024, they'll receive the full payout. So, getting to know how much you would have in the retirement pots, those are the amounts that would be reflecting uh, from the first, or rather, should be saying the second of September, because I think there's a that it will be a Sunday. And from the second, you will manage to actually check on how much money you'll be having. So you can basically, so once you lock into that particular app, go through the security check, it will actually show you your fund credit as, as well as how much money you would have, All right? Um, is the next question? Is that the good morning one? Okay, for instance, if, I, if a 31-year-old employee with a vested part of 500 rands resigns or dismissed in September 24, will they receive a full payout? Okay, so if a member that is 31 years old and with 500,000 within their vested pot, okay, what, we, what I need us to understand is everything that you've saved within your retirement pot up until the 1st of September, right? the old rules would apply. So if you leave the fund for whatever reasons, you will manage to get your full fund credit in cash. All right. Anything that you save post the 1st of September, what you can only access is money that's sitting within your savings pot and the rest that will be sitting within your retirement pot, you will not manage to access, but only access post-retirement or at retirement. Okay. I have a vested, and sorry, before I get to that one, uh, okay. good morning. On my benefit statement, there's a split between one vested portion as is 28 February, 2021, and non-vested portion contributions after 1st of March, 2022. What exactly does this mean? And because of this, will there be two CD pots uh, of 10% each? All right, very brilliant question. All right, so the vested pot, uh, sorry, the, the pot that this member is actually talking about is, which is something that we had not covered. From the 1st of March, 2021, members would have what we call a vested and a non-vested pot. And what it basically means is all contributions made the, are post the 1st of March, 2021. Um, there's a bit of background to this. All those contributions made post the 1st of March, 2021, would be treated as a pension fund, right? Now, what basically happens is when you belong to a pension fund or when you're forced to actually take out an annuity at retirement, you need to have a de minimis amount of at least about 247,500 uh, rands. Most members, you would find that between that particular period and now, that amount would have not reached that 247,500. But remember, our situations are not the same. Our income is not the same. You would have certain members that would have had more than 247,500, which means they would still, that amount would still form part of the vested amount, All right? Now, when it comes to the seeding of this amount, what they basically do is they look at the full fund credit as at the 31st of August, despite whether it was vested or non-vested, and then they'll seed from the full amount. So it doesn't really matter whether it was a vested amount or a non-vested amount. They look at the fund, full fund credit. So if Martin's got uh, 700,000 vested, sorry, non-vested and 200 something non-vested, they'll take the full fund credit, which is 900 something thousand, work out the 10% from that amount and then inject it into, seed it into the, 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 um, the savings spots. What if I resign before the 1st of September? Do I get the full amount? I'm worried with this question. And the reason I say I'm really worried is basically, it's a good question and a question that is very, very common out there. A lot of our members have been resigning and resigning basically because they have been misinformed on how this is going to work. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the money that you have saved up until the 1st of September, 
the old rules would apply. So you've got full access of that money, even 10 years down that line, the line. You would have full access plus full access of the amount that you would have saved plus the investment growth that you'd have actually accumulated over the years. So it makes no sense for a member just to resign to actually get that amount. But the answer to the question is, yes, you will get your full amount. You will still get the full amount even if you uh, resign in March next year. The full amount of the money that you've saved prior to the 1st of September 2024. Okay. If an employee retires with a vested pot of 500,000 and was 40 years old in 2021, will they receive the full payout? Yes, this member would receive the full payout. Because remember, if we're talking about the full payout of the money that they have saved pre-2020, uh, March, uh, September 2021, 2024, they would receive the full payout. The only time um, ladies and gentlemen, where they would not receive the full payout is it's for the amount saved post the 1st of September. If we can just get that part right, anything saved before the 1st of September, old rules apply, you get your full payout when you leave the fund. You cannot get it while you're still employed. When you leave the fund at any point in time, so this is only applicable to money saved posts the 1st of September. And the only money that would you be forced to actually preserve within the pot is money that is um, sitting within the retirement pot. Is it compulsory to have a savings pot? What if I want 10% to go into my retirement pot? Okay, so it is compulsory to have a savings pot because of the way the funds are actually structured. Um, but what can actually happen is you can make a transfer from the savings pot into the retirement pot, but not the other way around for obvious reasons. Because now people most probably start moving money from the retirement pot into the savings pot so that they can actually withdraw it. Because remember, we can actually make a full withdrawal of whatever it is that we have within the savings pot. So it, it, yes, it is compulsory to have two pots, but you can actually make a transfer from the savings pot into the retirement pot. I'm not sure of why one would want to do that because remember, in case you have a, an emergency, you've got an option to actually take out that money. But once you just put it into the retirement pot, you basically um, you basically locking that money in into the pot. Okay. Is it compulsory to have a savings pot? Yes. Can you can you add additional money into your savings pot? So the option of additional voluntary contributions still remains. So if your fund rules do apply, if you sorry, if your fund rules do permit for ABCs or additional voluntary contributions, you can still make those contributions. And once those contributions are actually made, let's just 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 give an example. So Martin needs to make an ABC, an additional voluntary contribution of 900 grants, right? What would basically happen is when that 900 grants is deducted, it will be split into the Two different pots. So in other words, the, the third would actually get into your savings pot and the two thirds would get into your retirement pot. What happens to the money in the three pots if you dial while in empl employment after the 1st of September? Nothing actually changes. The C of the Pension Funds Act kicks in. The trustees look at your beneficiary nomination form. The money gets to be distributed according to the trustees' discretion. So nothing actually changes. This is applicable to money that you have, will be having within your vested pot, retirement uh, savings pot, as well as your retirement pot. Will there still be growth on the savings pot? Yes, there will be growth. And maybe just to expand on this question, if I'm actually getting it right, any investment that you actually make within a retirement fund would be exposed to the different asset classes that you get, that you are actually in, uh, uh, exposed to. So whatever declarations that you get to get on that fund, those will be spread evenly. A lot of members have been asking in the other sessions that, okay, basically because we've got now three different parts, what impact does this actually have on compounded interest? Because now it seems like from the 1st of September, I'm going to start from zero or 30,000 in the savings pot and then a certain amount in this particular pot. What's actually happening, what I need us to understand is 
behind the scenes, all the money is actually invested in one particular pot. So if there's any growth, there is growth that's going to be played in all three separate pots. So you're not compromised in any way where you where you, you 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 should be feeling that you have actually lost out on growth. So yes, to answer the question straightforward, you will be getting growth growth in the savings pot. And remember, from the thirty thousand, for instance, that's going to be seeded or uh, into your pot, you're still contributing. So you're still getting to, going to be getting um, contributions into the savings pot as well as the retirement pot and investment growth on those particular um, in, sorry investment growth in those particular pots. When one does a withdrawal of 27,000, will that amount be taxed? And if so, how much? Remember, we, we said that the tax that is that is going to be applicable will be determined by your marginal tax rate. So if your marginal, if you're sitting on a 26% tax bracket, you're going to be the tax that you're going to be paying is going to be 26%. If you are earning less than 97, I think it's 97,700 you're going to most probably not pay any tax. But then remember, if it's going to be 97,700 plus the 27,000, you're most probably going to be paying 18% tax. So it's very difficult for me to say, how much tax will you be paying? Because I'm not um, privileged to how much, or rather, what is your marginal tax rate? So the tax that Martin is going to pay and the tax that another individual is going to pay to be paying is going to be different because we most probably do not end the same. Our pay as you earn is basically what is going to determine the tax that you're going to be paying. How long will the process be in order to withdraw from the pot? And will this amount be taxed if there, if it is, uh, if it is less than 15,000? Okay, the process in order to withdraw from the pot. Okay, now it also depends on which option we've actually taken. So if you've taken the option of actually doing it through the, um, the, the, the WhatsApp, it's actually a very fast process. And if you do it through the portal, but it may take a bit longer. And once we start speaking about seven working days to actually process this, we're talking about seven working days on receipt of all documentation and not necessarily to say, okay, Martin has submitted this particular document. If that's if, if, if you're actually doing this manually, Martin has submitted his ID. Three days later, you submit your banking details. Three days later, you submit something else. We're talking about seven working days post the receipt of all documentation. So the day that we actually receive all your documents is when we would um, count and start counting those days. Will this new in, uh, law have an impact on your retirement annuity? Retirement annuities are not affected by this. Um, your RAs, if you're talking about your retirement annuities, which are products that you purchase outside the fund, this would not have any impact on them. If you really get to think of it, your retirement annuities basically work just like your normal pension fund, where it's one third, two thirds, and you are only going to be accessing the money at retirement age. Okay, so the principles that these guys have actually introduced now, that the treasury has actually introduced now, kind of like mirrors exactly what we have on an RA. The difference, however, is that on an RA, you cannot make that um, withdrawal from your one third but the locking in of the money still remains the same. You touched on divorce aspect. Can you can a spouse also make a claim on another spouse's fund? Yes. Okay, so basically, once there is a claim, once we receive a divorce decree and the claim needs to be uh, affected, the funds would just need to follow the stipulations within that particular divorce decree. And how is this going to work? Because now there are three parts. What basically happens if if the if the divorce decree is stating that the member needs to take the, the non-member spouse actually has to take 50% of the assets, what they'll basically do is they'll take equal portions from all three different parts. So in other words, they'll take a certain percent percentage from your Vested amount, a certain percentage from your savings portion, and a certain percentage from 
your retirement portion. Um, we strongly uh, advise members, like it was mentioned in the video, that if there is a pending divorce, you need to actually inform the fund so that um, you you get to protect, no, sorry, the, the, so that we do not have any problems in the future. So you just inform the fund that there is actually a pending divorce and this will be recorded so that when the, when the withdrawal is being made, this would be, the fund would be aware of this. Okay. Good morning. If your example of 150,000 withdrawal, in your exa sorry, in your example of 150,000 withdrawal, after the 15,000 withdrawal, 135 will be left in the vested pot. I'm interested to know if any contributions made after 1st September will be split between the savings pot and the retirement pot, or the 135 in the vested pot remains attached. Yes. So, what basically happens is, yes, the 15,000 will be trans, uh, trans, uh, transferred sorry, into, the, um, to, into the other part. And once this actually happens, the 135 still remains in that particular vested part and you still get interest in that amount. Can you just go back to that question again? So the, 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 so the 135 still remains within that pot and you still get investment growth. And I just want to look at the last part. I'm interested to know if any contributions made after September will still be split between the savings pot. And then every other contribution that you make after the 1st of September will be separate from this 135,000. So you would have a member record that says 135,000 vested pot and whatever it is that you contribute post the 1st of September gets to be split in the two different pots, which is your savings pot as well as your retirement pot going forward. Okay. Okay, the other one, yes, seems like the same question. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we've covered most of the questions, if not all. Thanks, Debbie. You just mentioned we've covered your other question. Will this presentation be available to members after today? Yes, the presentation. We've got, we, we are actually recording this presentation. A recording will be actually sent out. This would also apply to the Zulu one that I'll be doing this afternoon, as well as the other different languages that we'll be doing. Uh, we will be also providing the Q&A as well after we finish with this uh, whole exercise. I think we'll be doing these sessions up until Friday, and then um, the Q&As as well as the videos will be sent through to all the members uh, the post this whole exercise. Okay. What I also do, because we've run out of time, is we also go back and check on the Q&As. If there are any other questions that have not been answered, we will document these and send them through to you. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this informative and you are more than welcome to actually send us through any questions that you may have. At the end of the day, the whole idea is to help our members make informed decisions. We've got a financial planning division and we've got um, the member first division that are ready to actually take on all your questions, ready to actually assist with any queries that you may have. At the end of the day, we're talking about your money and we need you to make well-informed decisions. And the only way you can do this is by getting as much advice as possible. So please feel free to give us a shout whenever you need to get any more clarity. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.